it's official. The cauldron is on the table. And I'm, <laughs> I'm now officially recording, just so you know, I want you to know. And yes, and we can see that, too, on the left. Oh, good. I'm glad you can see. And um, I love, is that a photograph? That of you, on of mine? Your, yes. Yes, it is. And it's also, um, it's a wig I made for one of my mannequins, uh, wool mannequins, that I'm wearing in my last two videos that were a one and two part. I owe you an apology. I have yet to see your latest creation. So, uh, and I, I really want to do that. It's been a little crazy, but I'll get into that later. But I love this. I love this depiction of you yeah me too it, i made it as more like it's like a hat wig so it's cool. it's really really cool i wouldn't sell it some people so many people wanted the mannequin it goes with and also that but i love it so much and i'm now yeah. glad that it's in those two pieces of video so it's got another extension of life through another yeah. way because it's great and it was so much fun to make so I don't know about you ladies, but this summer has been intense beyond any intensity I've experienced any time in my life. Mm. And I'm not just talking about seasons or summers. It's just been an onslaught of energetic um, intensities that have come in all shapes and forms. And before I go, I just wanted to put that out there and JJ, I mean, mm. first of all, I'm so in tune with Ma Petite. Oh. Your you look familiar. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I, I, I couldn't not, not speak about that. And since I saw that and I tuned in, I got to tell you, her energy has been helping me. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, she really helped me a lot, quite a bit over the four years yeah. I had her. I had her four years um, almost to the day, basically. And I think she was about six months old when I got her hmm. and uh, you know, the circumstances how I got her were strange, but <laughs> I'm not really going to get into that whole thing. But anyway, I, I got her and it was kind of a rescue situation. And I had never had a snake before. I had never taken care of a reptile. Um, but I did a bit of research and I, was hesitant about feeding, you know, because you have to feed them live creatures right. to keep them going. And I was you know, not really thrilled about that situation, especially having had, um, normally you typically feed them rodents or whatever, depending on the size of the snake. So I was kind of not loving that. <laughs> And I was like, well, what can I do? And I looked into it. She was so small. And I was like, well, I can start her out on earthworms at least. And that's how we started. That was doable for me. And uh, so, I, you know, I accepted the challenge of taking care of her and nursing her back to health. And my goodness, what a surprise she was to me. I had just didn't expect to have such a bond with such a tiny little reptile <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <sighs> yeah so it doesn't surprise me i mean everyone that met her people that were just like oh my god snake like uh, ew and just freaked out and terrified and most people uh, are yeah, I was like, no, 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 this is different. And I was even nervous. But I had handled snakes as a child. And I, you know, it had been many years since I had handled the snake. But a few, like a couple of years prior, I had the opportunity to hold a corn snake, um, a wild one. And the person that I 
you know, was taking it from assured me, no, no, it's not poisonous. It's not going to hurt you. I was like, okay, are you sure? Whatever. And mm-hmm. I took this wild corn snake and held it and it really took to me and it let me hold it. And I held it for half an hour <laughs> and it, it wrapped around my wrist like a, a bangle bracelet. And oh, it, wow. so when I, when I took petite, um, you know, I was fine with that. And, uh, yeah, snakes are just really beautiful. They're, there's just something about them that we really all can learn from. Oh, I definitely um, agree. You know, when I, you wrote that she was funny, that you never expected her to be so funny. My heart <laughs> opened up wide and I get it, but I, I, I mean, was she a comedian? <laughs> or- oh, she was just hilarious. She, she when I guess, you know, as we bonded together, she would venture out, you know, and get more, she'd explore more, whatever. And she would like climb up on my shoulders and stuff. And eventually I have long hair. Um, mm-hmm. Not everybody knows, but I have long hair and I would put up, put it up in a bun and she would climb up into my hair and get all tangled you know, and, and intertwine in my hair and get up into my bun and like wrap herself into my bun and just hang out in my hair for like an hour at a time. All so sweet. Happy to be hanging out in my hair. She'd hang. Oh, she'd like sit in my hair as I'd be beating a necklace or something and, and just hang over my like drape herself over my forehead and watch what I was doing. (laughs) (laughs) She would sit on the couch with me and watch TV. um, Hang out with me and my dog, Herkimer, who passed away before her. She, she, oh, her favorite thing to do, we, Sometimes I would have my tablet on the bed with me, propped up on the bed on a pillow. She would come and just mess with the tablet. She would come and I swear it was on purpose. If I wasn't paying attention to her, she would come and hit all the icons on the tablet. (laughs) One, One by one, she'd come and slide across and with her nose, she would hit each icon on the tablet. And and mess with with the, whatever show or movie I was watching with, and she would just climb up over the tablet and drape herself over the tablet. It was like she knew I was watching it, so she would come and mess with it and just be a total ham and like <laughs> like ha ha, <laughs> I'm interrupting your show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have videos of her doing it. Yeah, she was hilarious. I really love colubrids and that which is she's a garter snake. And I yep. just think they're the I think they're the friendliest of I've I've had a, a few different snakes and but they're the hardiest, of course, and they're native to North America. You know, they're definitely many native here, at least. They go, right. can take the cooler weather, and uh, there's something extra sweet about them. I'm not sure what it is. Plus, they're elegant. They're long and thin, and uh, there's just something about a colubrid. Those, if I ever get a snake again, it will definitely be in that family. Can I ask a question? This is a new vocabulary word for me. How do you spell colubrid? Oh, boy. <laughs> I, <laughs> see. I think it's like C O colubrid. L- a colubrid. B R E D. Did you pull it up, baby? Uh, no, I haven't even. I'm, I'm afraid I... of disconnecting <laughs> because of the internet. Yeah, it's like, afraid. yeah. It's, it starts with a C and then. Um, My tablet is not charged, I don't think. Let me. But it it ref- I'll pull it up. I'll try it ref- here. Uh, is, did, that refers to um, a snake family, one of the um, 
classifications? Yes. Yeah. So colubrid in its C O L U B R I D A E is a family of snakes. Okay. So it's a, you know, they're calling it with 200, 524 genera and so and, and 1760 species. Wow. The largest family. So, but what makes them great is they're just really adapted to four seasons mm -hmm. so they go into a hibernation period usually in the winter and uh and so they're just friendlier here as opposed to the tropical snakes everyone knows and generally gets so from the pythons to the boas mm -hmm. and all those other ones that need really truly need uh, a lot more maintenance and care if you're in the northern climates I and plus, they one. get colubrids don't get that huge. So, I mean, I belly, yeah, danced, I belly danced with snakes, and I've had gigant, a couple of gigantic ones. Really? And much like JJ was just saying, I was not having snakes until I met the snake I had for years, Sasha. And it was for a photo shoot. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable with this. So, they were going to get somebody else for the shoot, and I wanted to be in that particular. <laughs> shoot and so i'm like okay i'll do it mm -hmm. and i felt in love with her and ended up buying her and then oh my god yeah she was amazing and she was a rainbow boa oh. a, a red tail boa and at the time you couldn't buy those they weren't breeding them here they were taking them from south america so she was a wild caught one. Now they're really oh, bred wow. and you can get them bred, but th this is how far back that goes. Wow. wow. <laughs> I that, have a, I got a quick. Of snakes. Oh. <laughs> snakes for me are just, I'm, I'm in awe of both of you because I've never had one, but I, whenever I've encountered them on a few occasions, I've had very, very profound experiences and I, you know, I have a lot of Pluto for me, the summer has been going through the death realms. Yes, and same here. That's why JJ, when I when I saw that about my petite, it kind of brought everything to a sharp. Everything spun around and went into a, a very very keen focus, and in terms of what this summer has meant it you know does mean and, and what it's what it's going into and it involves you know death and loss and actually how beautiful it is how really amazing well it snakes is. represent that you know the ouroboros yeah yeah they, yeah tell us more in this well it, you know just that they shed their skin so there's this death and rebirth aspect to the symbol of a snake Mm -hmm. that is quite juicy and i just want to add into the actual conversation here this has been a summer of death for me and i think you know obviously for jj too uh I, mm. i've known a few people that have passed this summer and including my my little baby and it it so I'm not surprised to hear this from you, BB, mm -mm. that you're in the thick of it with JJ and I. Well, it doesn't surprise me that we are synced up for one. You know, it, it, it's always astonishing and not a surprise all at once at the same time when we get yeah. together and yeah. hear what's been going on. I haven't. Well, actually, I shouldn't say. Actually, I think I have experienced the uh, death of, of uh, someone in uh, my biological immediate family. Um, but I've been having dreams of people that I've lost over the last, oh, 10 years, almost every night. I'm in a different place in, I guess, I don't know, the other place with them. Mm-hmm. And having a ball the general mood of these oh, is a general it, swipe the the general mood is one of um upbeat but there's no surprise it's all very matter of fact it's like of course i'm here of course you're there you know we're we're gonna head over here and we've got some satchels to pick up over there and we're telling jokes and driving down the road we're journeying we're stopping off to you know crack open a bottle of wine along the side of the road under a tree 
stuff like that. Just um, journeying, I suppose. Journeying would be the general overall theme. But then it's not, uh, it's an, not until I wake up. And these are not lucid dreams, but then again, I am aware that I'm dreaming, that I wouldn't be able to be with these friends, family, loved ones if I were not dreaming. But it's not a lucid dream. I don't know how to describe that because this is the, um, the, the overall sensibility that I get when I wake up. But what strikes me is how these are happening almost every night. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I, I, I like the hearing that they sound joyful, all of them. I mean, just I would the say they are of mm-hmm. opening up wine under a tree and all that. I mean, come on. That's like yeah. good stuff in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'll share something with you. I think you'll both like, you know, I told a little story about my former boyfriend, uh, Jimmy, when we went to the Taos Pueblo. Well, it was. um Last week, I dreamt that he was serenading me with his um, Zydeco band. Oh, oh, I love Zydeco, too. That's wonderful. How long? It was great. So I'm familiar with them, but I can't recall how long it's been. Oh, God. I mean, um, the last time we spoke was in 95. Yeah, that's significant. And he passed, I think it was 2014. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. But it was so, uh, it was just delicious. The music was so rich and full. (laughs) And um, who knows what is going on? Who really knows what's going on? Well, there's a lot going on. Sorry, JJ, carry on. Oh no, it's um I didn't I didn't have any other I had uh I just had some really significant um anniversaries of deaths. Uh that'll well, do it. Speci- specifically in July mostly. Um and then petite passing. I don't think I had I'm trying to there wasn't uh there weren't any other actual deaths that I had I don't think I'm trying <laughs> it's so hard for me I'm having like I'm having such issues with memory I'm like did anyone else die maybe they did I don't remember <laughs> I you know for me this was I lost two two major people that and one was just Friday and oh, then wow. and then pill my you know, my beloved dog, which set me back. But this death I'm going through with my friend, genius choreographer, Juilliard graduate, dancer in New York's really well known in New York City. If you just go hashtag Stanley Love on Twitter, Mm. on on Instagram, you're just going to see hundreds and hundreds of, you know, amazing people talking about him. Oh, wow. Uh, But he was my, he's my oldest friend. And so I've known him since I was six and he was five. And it was, it, it, I'm pretty comfortable with death because so many people have passed since I was Mm -hmm. young. And so, and then in the last couple of years, there've just been so many, you know, last year at this exact time, Tammy, another very close, very long-term friend, but Stanley's is different. He takes me back to a place of home. He is the only one that connects me with a lot of in-house abuse that's left. And uh, we band together because he also had a rough life. He was a street over. And I will never forget the first day I met him. He had, it's the super seventies, right? And he had, he had a page boy haircut, you know, and I thought, what a pretty little girl to myself. I was like, his mom was like, I'm walking and she, you know, she's like, look at this little girl. She's got a haircut like yours. So we both had page boys and, uh, <laughs> and, but the seventies variety, right, you know, the yeah. 70s variety. and like everyone had them. You could say Courtney loves picture in her one of her photos. Like, right. Every Chrissy McNichols. I was just saying like, mm-hmm. everyone had it, including the boys. And, uh, And so we, we became, we were best friends for years and years. And, 
it, I mean, I could just tell, I'm going to tell a Stanley love story from that perspective because no, I'm the only one who has that side of him. Please, Everyone's yeah. got all these wonderful, amazing stories of him, mm-hmm. but no one has that. And so, uh, our, the torture stuff going on in our houses bonded us on top of just, I, we know each other, we knew each other. It was so immediate with them. And, uh, you know, his stepdad was so abusive. And so the childhood mine was too. And it was, it was just this bonding experience. Like his stepdad would beat his mom up and down the street. This is a middle class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would, we learned how to hide together. We'd hide or get up trees. That's how I learned to climb trees all the way to the top. Wow. Uh, And then he's the first one who got me in a, in his basement with some other friends conjuring the devil girl. (laughs) (laughs) We were were like seven and we got, I don't know how we got a hold of this material, but what's scary about that is we did conjure something. It was a blue light flame thing. And we were so afraid. I ran up and out of the house and got the hell out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She came in. And so, and we built fairy, we, we ran away to the woods always and had a, you know, our woods connection. So my early life is tied to him and it's the last one. So this, his passing has been a very strange mix this weekend. It's been a very strange mix of emotions for me because it's brought back memories I'd forgotten, stuff I didn't want to think about. Sure. Uh, and sure. and reading all this amazing stuff from people, you know, all, from all over the world where he danced and took his company. He never sold out. And, you know, his apartment in Brooklyn, he was been there for 25 years. So it was grandfathered. And so he could afford it because nobody can afford Brooklyn these days. Right. Mm, right. So, yeah, it's been it's been death, too. And, and like I said, this this has been a new flavor of death for me. And so it's taken me on a different level. At the same time, though, with Stanley, I just want to say I felt his presence so strongly. So there's not a deep sense of sadness. There's a deep sense of reminiscence right but there's not a deep sense of oh my god you know like i don't know it's not gripping and it's not gripping in the way pill was it's it's sad and it's tragic and he didn't even make 50 uh but he's here like i mean he's been literally in the room with me several times and I, i it's in a very strong sense of his energy around me and that's not a common thing usually i'll get them in the dream and i haven't haven't really had dreams of him so it is wrapping this this has been don't you think this is a bigger thing though it's the death yes oh it's definitely bigger yeah I pulled cards for the show and the first card I put for to the show, as I always do, I, this show's set up no different than any time I talk to anyone else, candle, incense, cards. I pull three cards always and the center card, I, they're not linear. I do a center card and one on each side to give information about the center. The center card's death. <laughs> wow. and, and then the supporting cards are the chariot and hermit and I had a jumper which was the king of swords mm. so three major arcana this is big stuff with death at the center wow for our chit chat and here we are <laughs> well, I, I want to report two things one when you spoke about Stanley initially and you said that you were going to tell a different story I felt his presence Yes, I'm not surprised, Vivi. Uh, just a sense of, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, <Yes. laughs> just absolute appreciation and joy. Yes. And, and uh, gratitude. And um, he goes on. He's, his energy is very powerful and wonderful. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to say in terms of the whole death thing, you had, I, I, queried a few minutes ago, you know, who knows what's going on? And you, Nish, piped up, well, there's a lot going on. Uh, (laughs) Now, I just also want to add that I have a parallel in that um, 
the la- my last connection uh, to my past, I found out passed away last year, but I didn't know. It's a long story, and I don't really want to take the time to go into it. But I, I feel the parallel there. It's And it's a connection with the roots and the theme of um, plant life. Yes. And, and the the cycle of the the earth cycle is very very it's all up and around me it's up to my shoulders it's mm-hmm. it, I, I smell the damp and it's going to get even more so as we go into the um coming months but i just wanted to add that that's that's just a little smidgen of my sense of it it's like, when I say I'm immersed in it, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm immersed in this sense of the cycle of dying and life and the biology of it even. And, and Yes. Well, it's, it's interesting you say that. And then the, also I have the Stanley thing, which goes right to my roots. And JJ and I have been talking, you know. Yes, we have. <laughs> and, and it's been about roots and foundational stuff recently that we've both been digging into. So I find this interesting that you bring that up. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah, go ahead. Should I, uh, or were you going to talk a bit more about Stanley Nish? Did you have, uh, Oh no, I just wanted to tie it in with the cards I pulled and where BB was taking us. Cause we had Ma Petite and, and then this stuff. And it's like, so it, it's just heavy, this particular last little few days, right. With all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, it has been quite a bit of, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I am really digging deep into my childhood and my roots and discovering quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit that has been hidden and um, just a lot of connections, people, um, tied to my family and my neighborhood, the people uh, connected to my family and my neighborhood and where I grew up and um, the, uh, the geography of the area that I grew up in um, and the actual, the ground, uh, I don't even know how to, it's just very interesting that area as it turns out, has been mined for iron ore and types of ores for decades and decades um, with magnetite and pyrite and all sorts of ferromagnetic materials for many, many, many years. Um, Uh, That's fascinating. Yeah, it really is. Didn't know that. And... It's all kind of coming together um, with the types of occupations of the people in my family going back through generations and also the people surrounding my family and the people that uh, there were, there was a family that sort of, it was a dairy, like a neighborhood daycare um, people that took care of me sort of where when my parents were working and I don't know it's a weird situation I was sort of raised by another family um, for quite a bit of my childhood even on weekends and trips when my parent when my dad went overseas and my mom went with him Mm. and that the the father of that family ended up being a bio chemist who was doing work in um, ferromagnetic materials. It's very interesting. (laughs) And look at (laughs) what you do. (laughs) It's amazing. Yeah. And it's just interesting um, with the chronic illnesses that I've developed and that my mother has and that my good friend that I grew up with also has and people 
in the same area that we now have and the off-gassing that comes off of these materials and strange, unexplained experiences that we've all shared. <laughs> well, and these so. magnetic and all this stuff ties into like, you know, stuff Tesla was working with. And then this could, this, you know, just for the woo factor, this can tie right into pro the programs and all of that. Like JJ really truly has this lineage. And so the further she's digging back, the more that, those stories, that narrative is surfacing. And mm. so it's been extremely significant to hear as, uh, as you've been pulling in these details because there, a, there are a lot of quote-unquote whistleblowers and experiencers and targeted individuals coming forth with less connection into these types of uh, circles and people and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's it's interesting stuff, BB. Very, very interesting woo that is tangible with Paper Trail. Well, yeah, so I'm I'm trying to put together I mean it's it's taking me a while but uh I'm I, I'm going to have to put together it's a lot of information I'm going to have to do spreadsheets and oh my god um, charts all kinds of stuff. that's well <laughs> what fascinates me is what impact is it having on your um your experience of yourself Oh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I've had to take breaks. I've really had to take uh, like a couple of weeks at a time to just not look at it because it's oh sure, it, yeah, it's a yeah. lot. This is, and this is where I have a, a lot to say. It, so, regard so far, aside from where all that wood takes us and those rabbit holes and all that is that we need to allow our, it, it, it behooves us. Nobody needs to do anything. It behooves one to be open to, to the stories and to also detach from one's personal stories and allow them air allow them to circulate and not just dispel them and debunk them and tear them down. These, these things come to the surface for a reason. And if you want to pull up the union seat or the psychoanalyst seat, that's fine. That's all great too. I think it all ties in and it's all got an important, uh, they're all important threads in the cloth. So, but we do know that there was a lot of, you know, the word that goes around these days, fuckery that has been mm. been laid down by people working out this tech and and playing with people's lives. And then those connected in, even down the line, even uh, on the periphery, a connection's a connection. And so, whereas... I may not be responsible for the stuff long dead ancestors of mine did. I may not be responsible or even condone any of it. It is still a psychic thread that connects me to these people and their actions. And that is where I always try to swim is what, what are the psychic waters here that we're dealing with and who else is swimming in these waters? And so that's just that's what I want to see happen with this like consciousness raising of all this stuff and this revealing this apocalyptic aspect <laughs> of this summer that we're dealing with, right? This is all this stuff's coming to the surface and and as within, so without, right? The collective is seeing it. We've got the, all the crazy news with all the crazy stuff. Well, this is all part of our collective innards being projected out. And we we're looking at it. And but while we're looking at it, it's important to remember that this is this is the screen. And if the stuff we need to start, we start pulling in the shadow content. And part of that is allowing the air, allowing this stuff to breathe and not cut it down. And so I just want I want to make that point because there's a lot of. uh 
there are a lot of naysayers right now that are really trudging forward. And I don't think that does anyone good psychologically. So I understand, I understand cutting down of trying to parse through lies, perceived lies, mind you, because what the hell is real? What is real? The, all we know is we get in a dream, we become lucid. Well, how do you stay lucid? You have to stay in that now instead of questioning where did, how did I get, the minute you say, how did I get here? You're out of the now. And the now is the only place the lucidity lives. And where am I going is also separates you from the moment of lucidity. So lucidity is this acute reality and we experiencing it we experience it in our outer lives too. So those of us like this, you know, dipping from the cauldron at the kitchen table saying, here's what's going, what we're all experiencing. And, and so we're talking about the now and it's got threads that go out into claws, cloths that we can't even comprehend how big and how densely woven they are, how intricate, they are how tactile they are all we know is we see these threads threads from me threads from bb threads from jj threads from people we love and know and it's all weaving together and it's better to take a step back rather than coming in and starting to cut at it that's where i am with this kind of with the woo and mm. so i validate this and, and for example, JJ pulling the stuff forward, this is important stuff to pull forward. Again, whether you're looking at it psychologically or in physical, in the physical reality of how is this affecting me now, being around that kind of thermomagnetics in my health, you know, etc. Brilliantly put, brilliantly yeah. put. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm with you so, so profoundly. I want to add that I experience when I try to go into engaging the quote unquote meaning that I get thrown out. What I have to do, I have found, I am continuing to discover is that basically the answer lies where the question is asked. So just asking the question and letting it go is very much the process I used to use when I, when I acted because it would reveal itself instead of trying to forge through and put labels on things and organize what shouldn't have been organized in the first place, et cetera, et cetera. So there's this process of connecting with the reality. And my reality, as I go and experience these roots and these stems and tendrils of the plant growth, of life and death is very much like it's bringing up for me the sensations and the recollection and the sense memory of what I felt when I was a child. I was so connected. It was so profound. And I'm feeling in and out. And I felt that as I listened to both of you speak today, this afternoon, this evening, the same kinds of sensations. So this concept Concepts are good. <laughs> this concept of being in the dream and being aware of this dream uh, is great. But it's also, like you were saying earlier, Nish, to disconnect from the, um, the personal involvement. But that's not it. It's, it's, being, it's possible to be connected with the dream it, and still feel such intense um, feelings, but to not take them personally. And I don't know, maybe someone can run with that because that's, people are taking things so personally and getting narrower and narrower and trying to determine the meaning that they're getting lost in this maze that truly has no outlet. It will take them deeper and deeper into their own undoing. This is what I'm seeing which, you know, you were talking earlier about um, the people who are hacking apart something upon first sight. That's not the way to approach what we encounter. It doesn't do anyone a good, it does, there's no good service from it. And 
it's nice. It's, you know, the thing I take from that BB though, is that perspective is it's great to, and I, I am the first person with the rebel gene to say question everything. Right. Yeah. But there's a, there's a line there when you don't allow anything to breathe. And if you can't step back and, and possibly view broad strokes and, and ste- you know, that's stepping back. Right. That's a great, a great way to put it. It's not removing your, you know, personal uh, experience. No, just take a step back and take a breath. And so much more will be revealed. I think it's very simple. And that's what I'm seeing people um, not, maybe they're not able to do it. I don't know. But this is part of the intensity. It's like the, you know, a snowball, the snowball effect. And there's that psychic and psychological turmoil that one can get hooked into if, you know, the, ov- the overall group experience can glom on. So we have to be careful of that. But I'm seeing, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's more pronounced. And I'm, I'm a good, what, 20 years older than you too. So I've, I've seen a lot go down and I've never seen it as insane as it is now, but this is also a good thing because I remember back in, um, at 9-11, I just, I knew what, what I was seeing was the innards getting blown up, blown apart. Tom is my witness. <laughs> that man is my witness to everything. But I, you know, I did. I, I said to him that this is all the, you know, all the underbelly of all the crap of this country is going to come to light. Just you wait and see, mister. And God, that was a long time ago already now, right? It was majorly significant though. From that perspective, like it's majorly significant on all levels because I think it opened up conspiracy to a lot of people and questioning narratives is I think most people are like, oh man, this just doesn't, doesn't sit most like looking at it logically it's like this doesn't sit <laughs> yeah it, it had well, and it's, Go ahead. especially the amount of people it affected you know and the family members questioning yeah it definitely pe- people were like no it definitely doesn't the pieces do not fit together so it started something and yeah, it's been many years and people are still still talking about it. It, spark, it definitely sparked something. It did indeed. Well, it's a big initiation for a lot of a lot of people into into so now there's this is home for us over here in the United States. This is this is on our front porch. This is in New York City, you know. And uh and th- so that's the first thing. And that was the first thing with the very first aspect or layer of that narrative was, whoa. It, uh, and then it, it, just the story after story after story and cover up after cover up and possibility. The fact that we cannot still get resolution on it, like hone in on it, it's pixelated. The more we try to zoom in the more pixelated it is like it's still so mysterious and so not right well for me what this is showing is that there are so many more anomalous forces involved you have all the stories of other players and different levels of players that i won't even go into now but there are these aspects of timelines and players at at uh, you know what's that word who are who are attempting to foil one another it's so it's so nuts but just me okay i'm not even looking at the bigger um purpose at a higher purpose for all involved just for me i feel a sense of well this is just showing how much like if not it, this is showing that we truly are in what I call a dream. I mean, what is a dream? <laughs> anyway, you know, there's so many ways we can go with this, but what the 
a non-resolution of all of these details getting fuzzier and more complicated the deeper people have gone over the last, say, decade. To me, this is a good thing because it it shows without a doubt to me that this is a dream. This is a dream. We are in a dream. And we must live as if we are in a dream. And we should learn. This is similar to what you were saying earlier, Nish. Uh, really being in the moment and mastering ourselves walking in that consciousness. What it means to interact with one another in the dream. One of the things, Bibi, I like here, this is, this is, there's so many reasons why I love you, but one of the things is that you're, you're, you're older than us. And so when you say stuff like in my lifetime, this holds a lot more weight. So like it does when JJ say that about someone who's, you know, people in their twenties, you know, it's, there's just more experience of having a looking at the conscious, looking consciously at the world. So it's weighty, it's way more weighty. And, uh, and so, and, and I've always been, you're like, to, you know, of course, you're like my Auntie Mame. <laughs> and, uh, I've adopted you as Auntie Mame. I love it. And, and I mean, of course, in the Rosalind Russell version, thank you very much. And <laughs> however, this is, this is what, what this summer, so kind of winding into what, how we started this, this summer feels like it's honing in in a strange way, like it's closing in and yet also at the same time and kind of like in contrast and ironically and paradoxically, if you could throw those words together and get anything out of it, it's also opening, revealing. But there's something that's gotten so detail oriented about this summer, so nitpicky. And uh, and here we are in the, we're moving into Virgo and um where it is about attention to detail. So in the summer and over it, there's, mm. and that's when one of my observations this summer is like, we're all really digging in the dirt and others that we know that have been digging in the dirt, like say Tracy Twyman, we are now aware of how dangerous this is. The danger of digging in the dirt and looking at our souls, looking at our cult, the state of us collectively, questioning the parasitical nature of stuff around us and how we're being governed uh, is, I think, never been more acute. In other words, uh, there are rules. It is set up like a game. And it's a wild, um, crazy checkerboard. There's a name for a pattern that's a crazy uh, pattern. I forget what it is, but that's what's being revealed. And, you know, Tracy Twyman, may she be joyful and, and go onward in her search. And I honor her her work, I honor what, what she brought, I honor what she did. I, I connected with her and because I'm older, I disconnected because I, I, I felt the danger. But she went where few would go and she paid the price. But she, she paid the price. She, yes, I she think did. she knew. She knew where she was going. And yes, if you, yes, I, I don't want to go into that now, but yes, I absolutely agree. And she left a very precious legacy that is going to be revealed as we go on and people run with it. And for me, that legacy is that um, pay attention to protocol. There is protocol. For instance, the protocol in a dream is don't start asking uh, too many questions because you find yourself waking up and falling out of bed or, <laughs> you know, something along that order. But there, there is protocol. And it's not so much rules as it is um, 
there are there's the culture of our there's a culture it's a cultural understanding of how to behave it's there are behavioral protocols in place where we are that's what and i think for me that that is one of the most profound things i'm ever going to understand that there are behavioral protocols in place for us in the here and now because where we begin is in the here and now wherever we are and if we pay attention to the protocols, it's going to reveal a lot. And Tracy, God bless you. God has bless you. And I, with all of my heart and all of my spirit and being, thank you. It's big. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think we I think all of us feel that. And again, it brings back how dangerous the times are, because it's not just her digging in the dirt. It's a lot of us sifting around. And because of that, in any archaeological dig, really, uh, we're we're fine. You know, someone over there might be all of a sudden onto the foot of a dinosaur, right? And here we are over at the nose and, you know, someone's at, at, a, at a tail and, you know, it's trying to put together what we're all finding and seeing. And that in any art, the synthesis of the separate, appearingly separate pieces is where the art, and I mean that with an E at the end of it, the real magic is, is connecting and saying, wow, these bones all make up a bigger piece. This, this all, in this archaeological dig, we have a dinosaur here, or we have, we have a glorious plaza from, you know, from Pompeii. It, it's, but you can't see it when you're just the one person over there sweeping away a little bit. Absolutely. I love that you said this, because to me, that is a protocol. It's the protocol of the, the big picture, that stepping back, taking a breath, connecting with community. What do you see? What do you see? Let's think about this. Let's feel about this. Let's just put it in the cauldron and look at it, swim around. And what do we have? And it touches on protocol. I think this is a protocol of, of human being ness that we fell so far from if only we would respect what the other finds if it's completely different from our own find right i believe that at one time we we did i know we did i i i know we did it's not a belief it's a it's a knowing so this this thing of everybody having this separate belief and separate thing and mine 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 and me 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 and i gotta believe and prove <laughs> that's off the protocol people that ain't right it's it it, it does it it does nobody any it, it does there's no service with that there's it, it's it's completely closes in and shuts off something that may be significant and it's better to just shelf something or put it on the back burner however you want to look at it just allow things to be that seem like they're not plausible and not connected because everything here is energetically based. I think we all know that. And I, I, I really truly believe even where if, if we look at, if we look at like the mental disorders and stuff, these people are telling truths that they're experiencing. And the and, and a lot of time, and so anyone who's done any time around people that are a little bit off balance mentally, you can, if you stand back and you let time pass, you can see where, whoa, they were completely honed in and what they were saying might not have come through in a way that was cohesive. You can look back and go, wow, this person was honed in to what was going on energetically. And now looking back, the illusion of time has happened. You can see the circumstances physically, how they played out and how they interpreted this information. And so, and, and, and people are coming to this more and more. And that's part of this revealing is, 
it, and it's, you know, this is the step we take with psychics. This is the tough steps we take with, uh, with empaths too. You have to be open to the information to receive something from it. And so it's, it, and, and I'm, I'm just saying this, I've been stepping back from, from people that are closing my mind off to things. Good. Same here. I've had to. Yes. I've, I've actually just really closed out, closed out the closers. <laughs> actually. Because, I mean, I've really actually stopped. Well, I mean, I've really tried to isolate myself from listening to a lot of, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts or read a lot of things or anything anymore because I just feel like it's a lot of, I do enjoy, I do enjoy listening and reading a lot of these things, but there's a lot of negativity right now. A lot, a lot, a lot. And I feel like there's a lot of judgment and I really just want to trust my own instincts just like I did as a child, because I feel like I was so much more in tune as a child and I just don't want anything affecting my abilities. Because um, I feel like we should be trusting ourselves and we should not be affected by the negative forces and all of the the judgment. Sorry, I had to chime in a little bit. I'm oh, getting a little off board. I had some good. some background. Um, I had to mute for quite a while here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's funny. Some <laughs> some noise on the home front. I love, here, but, um, I love <laughs> you, that you say though, and it's not at all off track at all. And it brings me to mind that what what's happening right now with all the devices and all of the media that's available Ugh. that if we fill up our space with all that stuff, there's no space for our own selves to emerge to that we can engage with. And this is what I was discovering, uh, you know, with, with um, it's not that I was spending so much time on Twitter. It was available as I was working on, on my stuff. And I, 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 I found myself being affected by negativity, as you were saying. And I thought, why? There's no need for this. And I just, you know, stopped it. But there's, it's extra, it takes extra steps to disengage and to be in connection with ourselves these days. And it's so important, you know? Well, and so... You know, and back to kind of like the idea of the summer and what's been going on. If we look at, so this, this statement that you, you opened with, maybe talking about how, like in your life, how strange this all is. It is, and, and from the stance of standing back, looking at the world, at the collective situations going on and just looking at the weather alone <laughs> and how uncanny, how unpredictable, how tumultuous it's been everywhere on in the globe or on the globe. Uh, however you want to look at that. And it's that alone is is reason to pause. So hearing someone say, you know, the fires, you know, someone say, well, it's global warming and then shut down everything else. Well, if, you know, what about these, the coldest winters that are not never ending happening in some places mm -hmm. and rains in the desert that have not had rains in thousands of years and like all this crazy and, and excessive snow in Hawaii and right? uh, I mean it's all over <laughs> yeah there's been some weird anomalies for sure it, well the new size you know the new hail is is now tennis ball size you know, <laughs> 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 I know it's just, exactly 
<laughs> so this is this is and the problem that I'm noticing with a lot of people is it's becoming normalized. And, and so it's even though it's not as localized as it used to be because we have the internet and all that. Hey JJ, up. quick request. Can you put your mic on mute if it's being moved? Okay, I'm sorry. Just it's real easy just to click the mute button. I click it right. all the time. I'm like, yeah, anyway, sorry. So yes. And, and so that alone, and I think that's making everyone, even the people that are saying that are wanting to pull up to an official narrative, which is whatever one you want to pull up to, that are still going in in their in their gut, it, that are still that's probably playing out in their dreams and their anxieties. Mm. Something is going on more than that. Something mm-hmm. is happening at a deeper level. And and this is where we're seeing all of this feed itself further, like a tulpa almost, right? A there you go. Yeah. Right on. And so that's where I'm experiencing this being the strangest period ever as well, BB. Like and on then, the nuts and bolts level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it has very um, shape-shifting dreamlike qualities that are just unavoidable, even for the most hardened, normal, quote unquote, you know, normy person. It, it can't be avoided unless they had their head in a bucket of concrete. However, the other side of this, you know, the Vedas say that there is no beginning and there is no end. And these are massive cycles. And that we are in, in this turnover, crossover, transformational time where anomalies are... I don't know if the right word is traditionally, but they have been written down in very, 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 very ancient writings, particularly from who knows when, right? They were leftovers in our current cycle. But it's wondrous stuff. And it's impossible to have a blasé attitude. I used to have a blasé attitude. I went through this period after the 70s. In the 80s, I was like, oh, God. I'm like, I'm so over this. I, I, there's no way I'm ever going to ever, ever feel that way again. It's wondrous. To yeah. Be yeah, absolutely. I think, right. And uh, this is another aspect of the 2012 experience for me is it, completely happened and people that expected a Hollywood all in one day experience uh, make me laugh and, and they make me laugh and it's a, it's a hearty belly laugh. It's not a laugh. It's not a sinister right. laugh. At them. Right. It's a hearty belly laugh, knowing the nature of anything that grows, you put a seed, it takes time to germinate and grow and all this. It, it, it's this idea of n- nature moves in a strange way way and overlaps and moves it's it, nature in and of itself may look linear to some people but it's really just these great spirals these great fractals and uh 2012 happened and it happened in a big way and uh i certainly felt it energetically and have never been ashamed to say that i was never expecting a boom boom you know, rapture experience or, you know, it was, it was always, this is a set point and it kind of lined up with all these other older stories from the Hopi to the Hindu. Right. 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 It, it, it's lining up with these other oral traditions that go way back. And here we are. This is part of the unfolding. And people like SMQ, you know, are we dead? Did we die in 2012? These are questions we really need to ponder. That's a valid question. You know, absolutely. My daughters and I were kicked out of the universe we had been in. And, you know, all three of us started paying attention to these strange things that began creeping up in 2013. You know, and uh, yeah, so I don't even want to go into that now, but you're absolutely right. People like SMQ AI are very helpful. And I, I like his demeanor, too. He's very steady. 
you know, he works with numbers in his day job. Yeah, and he's calm. I like the calm yes, brings. Yeah, very much so. And people like him are asking important questions where I want to go back to what you had suggested and pointed out earlier, Nish, to just step back and and allow oneself to take in what is being presented and to take a breath. It's okay. It's good to ask questions, but we don't want to just jump in before we've actually seen. We want to be scientific in a certain way. You know, you want to you want to observe the data as it's presenting because there's so many revelations and just even a simple uh, sight or a sound or even a bend or a twist a word or a mist or a cloud or color. Boy, this is a rich universe. I love that. Well, it, it is, I think it's important to, uh, as Chandra always says, approach things reasonable. Is it reasonable? And I think that's a powerful message uh, to, to keep yourself grounded, you know, cause it's easy to, it's easy to, float off and oh, yeah. I allow myself to float off I'm one of those people but I will allow re- to get on in in this apparent reality we're having I will allow re- the reasonable structure to guide a lot of times how I interact with people and this is the beauty of having circles and I like the idea of circles of friends that you know like spiraling but where there's you get into you're real close Mm -hmm. close to the kernel people and that's usually you know the smaller it is it's a super close you know couple people a couple few people where you can trust with uh the stuff that seems hard to convey to the outer world where you're going to be judged heavily. So we all need an outlet outside of ourselves as long as we're participating in an external experience until we stop with the external experience, which some may call that actual death or a second death, whatever, until we stop projecting outward. And right now, if you're having a day side experience, you're in a projected outward experience. Uh, uh, It's good to have, it's good to have others that understand and are not judging and are also noticing and connecting these same dots. And it's good to go down those avenues with these people at the end. It's all fascinating. And aren't we lucky? We definitely are lucky. We're lucky to have at least a, at least a few people that we can share these things with and keep us anchored and not feeling like we're going nuts (laughs) i appreciate it i feel very lucky to have the two of you sitting here with me at the table (laughs) you know it's really it's very precious for me because sometimes i feel very isolated where i am i keep saying i mean to get out in the physical world and and meet more people (laughs) i i I do but it it's it'll happen it'll happen i'm not complaining i'm 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 reveling in this experience of JJ oh. and Nish at the table. Right back now, at you, sis. Yes. It, it, this is obviously an ongoing conversation. It's uh, circles and cycles. And this is, I, I want to say one thing. I know I can tell you're winding it, BB. You're so good. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, 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 I say one thing on on the outer world and meeting this yeah. and stuff is yes i i mean i'm naturally an introvert i always have but like any good actor i'm able to turn it get on stage and turn sure. it on the show goes on and right. you know this both of you know this yeah. and uh it's not like any of us have trouble communicating we know how to communicate and we can turn it on we're all lies you know Mm -hmm. so it's not about that i'm really picky these uh, i shouldn't say picky my palate is refined in the stuff that i want to expose myself to in the outer world these days and this is the beauty of of this sorcery 
that we're using to connect. This is what's so great about the internet and all of this. This is the positive side of the tech. Uh, increasingly, I'm not wanting to go out in the public the more locked down it gets. I'm, I'm appalled by it. it. It It's almost like a passive no to surveillance, no to everyone on their cameras. I go out anyway. Everyone's looking at their phones. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so so it's nice. It's nice to do that, but we we do really have these deep connections via this new technology, this modern uh, day witchery, and the three of us coming together at BB's table, eating a casserole out of the cauldron, is an example of how deep, in depth, and intense these interactions can be. It's true. It's uh it is a plus with the technology. And it's very interesting because at least for me, I I've met some of the most precious people in my life through this technology, which is odd to me. Especially coming, you know, I and it, it probably maybe is for you, certainly, BB. Um, at least generationally, I don't know. I'm probably speaking for us all, but coming from a time when there were rotary phones and no internet at all. And, it's really you know, fun. <laughs> you just, you, you would agree to meet your friends at a time and a place you didn't have a cell phone or whatever. And now you're meeting people, you know, none of us have met. Well, I don't know you two have you met in person, but we, we've not met in person. And uh, here we are. <laughs> yeah. And we have some of the, we've got like really meaningful relationships and we, we've met through the internet. It's pretty interesting. It's an amazing technology, the wizardry of it, the sorcery of it. It's, it, you know, as you, I really appreciate that notion. I never would have met the two of you, or it would have been very much more difficult for uh, the three of us to have come together if it weren't for this technology. The technology itself, I think, is is absolutely wonderful and fun. We can do so much with it. There are other issues involved in it. It. When you said taking bites out of the casserole at the table, I, I had this sensation of the physicality of this connection and tying it back to the dream and how in a dream, is that real? If we feel that and we get nourishment from that, so, <laughs> right? These are the right. kinds of questions that they're the open-ended questions that are are really helpful that um i find them to be really helpful some people get very upset with me because i want to keep expanding the you know as we're looking at something but i don't feel that way with you too and i feel that um i'm very grateful wow this is but see this is the thing and i just want to i want to say this because it was a critique i recently received and Someone said I can be too vague mm -hmm. and it, it's it, as an artist too, that deals in detail and stuff like that. Uh, it's the, a lot of times I find, you know, it, I, it's, listen to me, I'm even stumbling over the idea and, and the, and the critique, the critique was interesting because I do try to deal in very open I try everything I look at is open and, and mm -hmm. I, I want to remain open. So I don't, I do not intentionally want to close myself in. I've been that person mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm so glad I'm not that person. That person cracked. Right. right. You know, yep. it's, it's helped me to be open and vague, I guess, because it's allowed new information in. it's given me plasticity. It's, uh, it, the world's more magical and beautiful this way, certainly. Even the dark, dark stuff that none of us are denying. These are dark times. The yeah. shadows are out 
and about the parasites are becoming more visible this is a this is a dark pe- period which is also fascinating to me and uh so yeah i'm i apologize to people that that find it necessary to get hone in on absolutely utter detail but if you do that with say mandelbrot or fractals you're just going to keep seeing no matter how deep in <laughs> that same vague <laughs> fractal piece. there's no way out of that there's yeah there's no way out of that and then yeah i love i love that you that you said that that's great and it's it's a wonderful quality now you know we all have different natures we all have different sensibilities and individualistic ways of experiencing but being open being flexible also leads to a certain amount of porosity Mm. which we should be open to observing as well and the time for implementing an application of firmness and uh, stillness and closing off the porosity is something that I'm actually in active pursuit of right now. So I'm glad that you brought that up. This has taken me many decades, <laughs> you know, to come to come to that. But the first step out of the cultural insanity is to step back and take a breath and to expand to expand the awareness. Don't just settle on the belief system that unconsciously pops in because it's something you learned and you're not even aware that it's in your system, neurally ingrained. You know, there's a word for that. It's called samskara in Sanskrit. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. So yes. This, this is the inner work that we do. And it's just the process of you know, know thyself. It, oh, but, absolutely. That's so key. That's so significant. And, it, it, you know, it's a meme, sadly, because so many people pushing that meme, I notice, do not observe it. I mean, we can see, you can look into people's lives and see <laughs> what's going <laughs> on. It doesn't, words, choice of words, and if you're close enough, actions, what they like, what they don't like. All of this tells us a lot about people. Mm-hmm. That's unconscious to a lot of people. They don't realize that one can see and does not have to be a psychic. <laughs> it's a process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a process. Yeah. You know, this is be this is something that's constant ever on my mind, ever, ever, ever on my mind, and it. I, I think it started post twenty twelve, and the idea was way there way before. But then the reality really started to kind of sink into my being at around 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. And there was viewing my experience as an immortal. Right. We don't die. Mm-hmm. I just I'm the, so I guess I'm that open that I realize energy doesn't die. <laughs> it transmutes. It moves around. It shifts. I can look back on my life and see a million different lifetimes within this one. Absolutely. I don't yeah. relate to the niche that was three, four five, six. I don't even relate to her from last year. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm glad. So if that contradicts itself, if somebody listens to me from two months ago and I'm contradicting myself, I bet you new information came into my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> the personality the personality is just one aspect the personality is a costume yes and so if we yeah. look at look at everything from the eyes of immortality and that that changes the idea that changes the stories around trans the transience of our avatars and of this identity that we everyone so really clutches on to and 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 if you're if you're lucky enough to have are going through the aging process those chains do drop away as we watch ourselves our avatars age it's a gift people it's a gift and in society in general it's really not looked upon well because the gift is freedom 
<laughs> it's an internal freedom. <laughs> and uh, and so stepping into the world as an immortal allows you some riches that I cannot find words to describe. I so agree with that. I've had, I feel like I've had the same as you, like so many lifetimes in one lifetime. And I'm turning 46 on Thursday and I feel like, Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, our thank, JJ still in return. Hey, <laughs> JJ. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but I don't even feel like I... Uh, the age doesn't even really... I don't feel like I identify. I look at myself I, and my body. I look at how my body has changed, especially with the health issues I've had continuing and changing and the weight loss that I've had in the last year, I've lost nearly 40 pounds and I'm looking at my body, like, what is this? And, wow. yeah. um, you know, developing epilepsy and migraines and all kinds of weird stuff on top of all the other stuff I had and, wow, JJ. um, having, <laughs> and having come out of a crazy, extremely unusual abusive dynamic of 12 years just all sorts of weird you know it's we we all have our things we all have we've all had especially the three of us <laughs> more than average people i think situations um yeah i agree i think we are having different lifetimes within a lifetime. And yeah, I think we're immortals. I don't feel, I don't identify with my, my age in this existence in this lifetime at all. <laughs> and people are like, you don't look like your age. I'm like, well, I don't feel like my age. It's, I don't. And I think that's part of why I don't look like my age, you know? Yeah. What, what, what does it even look like and that's always been my thing what does it even look like and the the idea of if we allow ourselves to step into the strange you know that 60s thing step into the strange it, we are again opening up the world to our uh, to ourselves where this is a gift to self allowing allowing the world to be enchanted rather than oh man i gotta you know i gotta do this this and this to stay on the samsara of things and uh it's 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 really that's what you were just saying jj it, with the three of us but it's possible for anyone is to allow the strange in like, allow a little bit and a little bit grows and it's all right. It, it's a beautiful thing. And there's a reason why historically some people stick out outside of narratives, but in talking like in the artistic movements, mm -hmm. we've got these great eccentrics. These eccentrics were stepping into the strange. They were allowing the world to be magical, to, to, to possibly be crazy to some people, but look at the lives they lived and guess what? They're remembered. <laughs> so I join in with Gordon White when he says, you know, our purpose, we're here to re-enchant the world. Yes, yes absolutely. So and yeah. I want to add something onto it. You, what JJ was saying earlier, what you, you were talking about the body and identification with it. This summer in particular, I am becoming aware of my avatar and my relationship with my avatar, much in the way that I love my dogs. If that makes Ooh, sense. Oh, yes. Total sense. Yeah. It's like, hello, sweetheart. Oh, how about a nice job? You know? <laughs> this ties into so much because that's going against the grain of programming that's been everywhere for a long time and stuff. So I don't even allow myself. I mean, Jesus, at the same height I've been, I've been 80 pounds and I've been like 
I think I topped out at 180 or something. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm not, you know, I'm petite. And so, you know, you bet that 180, I was rolling, honey. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I was cute rolling. And, I bet you were. Uh, <laughs> and, and but the thing is, I've loved it every step of the way, and I've not been a hater Good of for you. of yeah. my shell because it is it's my car, and I'm getting into yeah. it, and and so it's also been inspiration to clean it up and change the oil, and you know, pay attention to what goes in it and makes it run, all of that stuff. But this idea of the outer world constantly constraining us and these projections of self-loathing are part of the test, I think, in the outer world. Because how can we achieve anything deeply spiritual while we're hating on the stuff that's projected outward, outward are starting with our vessels? Right. How can we get to anything higher? If we, if we right at the base there, I mean, come on, I'm working with what I, I'm working with what I've got, baby, you know, like, and I, this is why I've always found the most interesting looking people created, you know, like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm attracted to interesting looking people. And I think, uh, and I'm put off by people that are caught up in, uh, in ideas of, of closed in beauty, you mm-hmm. know, I love big ears. I love big noses. I love awkward walks, you know, like all this stuff that I find beautiful, Betty Davis, beauty is where you find it. Yeah. Your idea of beauty is going to be different than mine. And I allow mine to shine and I allow yours to shine for you. So, you know, this homogenized reality, which is very AI, it's the AI comes in, right? We're seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's been here. It's been, it's just, a, now's the perfect time for it to emerge. I got a question for you, Nish. When is the new podcast coming out? Uh, it's, that is, I don't know, Michael. So on Instagram, Flying Saucepan, is that right? Jane? Oh, yeah, yeah. I found. Is that right, you guys? Is yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a, this is great because your insights into life and experience and the strange as an artist uh, are just so valuable. Every time I hear you speak on them, and you're going to be expanding on on this. Yes, that's that's the whole point of um, way of the crucible, which is basically like this, you know, right? It's the cauldron at the table. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> you on that, baby? We're cooking with oil. <laughs> so Michael does, of course. You know how I am. There's kind of this princess aspect to me. I show up. Mm-hmm. So Michael is doing every like Jerry, right? Everyone needs a Jerry. Well, everyone needs a Michael too. And I'm lucky to have both. Uh, Michael's doing all the editing and he's doing all the hard work. And so we That's have great. a bunch. And you deserve that. Well, absolutely. absolutely. You know, I, 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 but I'm also in honor of it. And I like to make sure that that's out there. You know what right. I'm saying? That right, right, it, it's right. recognized. And uh, because it's a lot of work, BB, you do this. Hey, I'm a nerd. I'm, I'm an audio tech nerd myself. And, yeah. I love it, and it is a hell of a lot of work. You know, you yeah. know, and your stuff is as top quality as it gets. So it takes a Thank lot you. of work. And so I appreciate this and others. And so it's, you know, Michael says he wants to get it out soon. Uh, he's worked on, I think, the Amy Putney episode, the JJ's in there. Uh, it, it, it's, I don't know. When I have to get out. caught up. I really do. I've got to get caught up. I've, I've been. Um, Did we book you, BB? No, I because you're on the list. I mean, you're an actor. Oh, that's exciting! Stuff. Yeah, you're on the list. I just don't know. We got ahead. Michael wanted to stop with canning interviews and just get. To yeah, I, I I understand where he's coming from. That's that's very important. Well, you know, something down the line to look forward to. But these are the kinds of 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 conversations that just sweeten my pot expand my experience and put me in that strange place that strange place i love that strange place oh strange <laughs> is such a beautiful word <laughs> <laughs> it really is it really is 
I I want to thank you both. I'm going to I'm going to have to end it because my lower back I don't know. She wants oh. she wants to go for a, a doggy stroll. <laughs> well, she's telling you it's time and we probably won't way over the allotted time we were going for. Yeah, whatever. It, what, know, how, what time are we at? <laughs> we are at an hour and a half right now. Of course. We wait. Uh, That's wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Oh, <laughs> my daughter just texted me. <laughs> okay, sweetie, have a, have a good time. <laughs> that that does my heart good when she does. Um, well, you know, hey, there are going to be more conversations. At, yes, at the table Definitely. with the and Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you both so much. I'm so grateful. Um, I've expanded. It's a good place to be. I gotta stand up. This is my back. Here we go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Look no. at <laughs> oh. It wants some movement, lady. <laughs> yeah, oh, my, yeah. So, um, much, much love. Do you, either of you? We love you. Oh, yes, we love you. you. I love you all. This is, this is why I said yes, because you are two of my favorite soul <laughs> incarnate. Mwah. You both are to me, too. I love you guys. Um, yes. So yes. you do your post magic with the all the rest, Phoebe. I see you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's like screaming. But, you know, it's funny because Lulu, my elder dog, is also like yipping. She wants to go for a walk. And now that it's cooled off, I think all the doggies, all the dog avatars are going to go for a walk. And yes. um, just before... I sign up. Is there anything else that that you you, you know you want to say before I turn off? For now, I'm just said. Mm-hmm. I think I said it. I love you both, and I'm glad that we're doing this. This is great. It is yeah. definitely a a monthly ritual. I will pull up to. Yeah, I am super excited too, and thank you so much. Well, my pleasure. I'm thrilled, and um, it's juicy. I love you. (laughs) Love you. (laughs) Take care of your back. I will. I will. Nish, do you want to stay on or you got to go? I am. I actually have to go. So. All right. Sounds good. We'll talk soon. All right, honeys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Love Love you. you.